after Harvard Business School, you uh, went to GE. Yep. Now, why did you pick GE? You know, there was no connection to my dad or anything like that, but I knew GE was a good place to learn and train. And I said, hey, I'm going to go there and stay five years, right, okay. and see, see what happens. So I joined the plastics business uh, when I joined GE, and that kind of just, uh, I was in the field sales and marketing and things like that, and that was really how my career started. I always tell people, like, you know, like they say, how do you put up with stress? And I said, well, you know, my first job was like selling plastics in places like Detroit. And I would sit in the Shoney's restaurant at breakfast, having dry heaves, you know, getting ready to sell a price increase, walking across the street, saying, oh, God, I hope I don't die today. And, you know, on those experiences, great careers were born. All right. Well, it worked out. And you went to a series of uh, Yeah, I did positions. classic uh, uh, G Appliances, uh, uh, G Plastics, G Healthcare. So you're announced as a CEO. And, in fact, you took the job. And then a couple days later, 9-11 happens. Mm -hmm. So what did you think? What's going to happen at GE and your career? Oh, gosh, David. So, you know, it was, it was an amazing time. You know, and every year when we, when we go through 9-11, I, I think of the tragedy for the country, which is still very real. At that moment in time, uh, we owned 1,200 aircraft. We owned NBC. We were the biggest business in GE in 2001 was insurance. People don't, people don't know that. So we had reinsurance on the World Trade Center. And it was just, it was a panic, really. So, so uh, you know, we went dark on NBC for three days. We had to take a billion, more than a billion dollar write-off. Dark we meaning you had no advertising. No advertising, right. But the most, the most important thing was uh, what happened in aviation with the leased aircraft. So uh, we would have, like, nightly calls. And the vice chairman at that time was a guy you know, Dennis Nairman, who's a great guy. Uh, he's since passed away, but I love Dennis. And we would have a teleconference at... Uh, let's say 9 o'clock at night, and the guys would call in and say, okay, um, Airline X is going to go bankrupt tomorrow unless we buy a billion dollars of WTCs. Okay, and I, I would say, Dennis, what's a WTC? And he'd try to explain it to me, and I'd say, well, what, what would you do? He said, we got to do it. Okay, let's go, you know? And, and it was just night after night of this, you know, airline bailout. So we were shutting down airlines around the world because the country hadn't passed terrorism insurance. Wow. And so you're making these decisions. So that was like 30 days, right? And then I'm finally thinking, I'm in Fairfield, I'm thinking, okay, the sun's going to rise again. Phone rings. Uh, Bob Wright's on the phone. He needs to speak to you right away. Bob Wright was... Uh, Ran NBC in those times. And he said, uh, tonight, Tom Brokaw just received anthrax in the mail. Another infection, this time at NBC News and Rockefeller Plaza. Uh, Rudy Giuliani's in the elevator. They've shut down 16 square blocks around 30 Rock. What do you want me to do? I said, Bob, let me put you on hold just for a second. <laughs> and just, ah! You know, just like, so that was my first, that was my Jeez. first month. 